Hello, good friends, and welcome to Kelly's Wordy Reactions. I want to thank you for stopping by today. Also, if you would please hit the thumbs up and like the video as you come in. Uh, as well, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I want to let you know that I am so happy and grateful that you decided to stop by. Please feel free to hop into the comment section as this is not a live. And if not, then that's fine too. I will still feel and very much appreciate your presence as well. And to the commenters, thank you so much. All right, here we go. All right, so let, let's, let's get on with it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is shout out to our friends at Phone Calls from Prison. We will be diving into one of the one of the Fulton County. Y'all, when I saw the Fulton County calls, I was like, I didn't even process it at first. <laughs> I looked at um, did I see the call first or did I see the message? I think I didn't see the message first. I think I just saw the call and I was like, it was like something that was different about it, but it didn't like process to me, like right at first that it was a Fulton County call. And it's like, when I looked at it a second time, I was like, hold on, hold the presses, <laughs> like stop everything. This is a Fulton County call. Like we're actually going to get to uh, be able to see what was discussed before he ever got to Cobb County. And if y'all will remember, and I'm pretty sure you do, I'm pretty sure you know and have heard other content creators talking about it, and you know yourselves that these are the conversations where um, Mr. Majeski over there at, in, um, Judge Manning's court had said, we have, we have heard uh, calls where Ernest Williams has talked to his wife about going to Abu Dhabi, as well as a girlfriend about going to see her in Florida, about going to Florida. And he said several times, actually. And so, you know, another thing that we know is that we don't have all of the calls that phone calls from prison has ever, you know, gotten. Um, you know, we, we know it's taken them time to get through the calls, uh, time to sift through and figure out what is the most important things for us to know at any given time. Or, you know, we really don't know their process for putting calls out, but I'm probably, I would say even a hundred percent sure that we haven't heard all the calls that they have. Um, but we do know that of the calls that we have heard, they've all been from Cobb County because up until this point, the Fulton County calls were not available or we had learned We had learned through uh, whatever whatever source that they were not, they couldn't get the Cobb County calls. And I don't even remember who all reported what, but that that's the like the common knowledge, right? So, and we also know that we have not heard them necessarily, definitely not Abu Dhabi, um, I don't even know that we've heard them talk much about uh, Nesto going to Florida as far as when he got to Cobb County. I can't, I maybe they did. I just, I can't really put a finger on it. So I think, I know for sure what I was always thinking was that, boy, it would be nice to hear some of those Fulton County calls because we could see like what was going down. After all, that was 
when he was first able to talk to Sonia, when Sonia first, you know, went through all of her shenanigans to catch up to him and find out where he was, that's where she talked to him first was in Fulton County. And so we don't know what the conversations were like when she was first talking to him, when he first thought he was going to be getting out right away. We don't even really know what the conversations were like with Shirley early on, or we didn't before a few days ago. So we have a, a handful of these Fulton County calls, and I want to just go ahead and start uh, digging into them, or at least one, at least one right now. Uh, but first, I think I'm going to bring us to the point in time. Let's go over here when we heard from Mr. Majeski, he said, um, no, judge, uh, what you're hearing is the simplified version, uh, because, because, uh, attorney Creel Lewis was, you know, going through the motions and telling the judge all of the pertinent information about Ernest Williams. And uh, when it became someone else's turn, Mr. Majeski, Kevin Majeski butted in and he said, hold on, hold on, hold on, judge. Hold on. Don't go any further. Because he was about to go to, who was he about to go to? He, I think he was about to skip to this uh, Miss Patton over here. And, uh, or either her or ADA Taylor, but I think it was Miss Patton. He was, uh, I'm sorry, not he. Judge Manning was about to give a turn to speak, and Kevin Majeski butted in and said, Hold on, I got a few things to say regarding this matter. So he jumped on, and so let's, um, let's jump in here right when hopefully. I think uh, Crail is talking right now, but I think I'm going to try to go to the point to where Kevin Majeski starts to lay out his case. Um, Crail was a little disconnected and seemingly like uneducated about his client. Um, I don't know if that's like a tactic or a technique of his, but it didn't, it didn't come across well. To me, it just came across like he didn't even really understand who his client was. He seemed to be like um, bumbling and a little fumbling all over the, the information. Um, and like I said, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Maybe that's a, a tactic to kind of like, I don't know, like a push and pull tactic to make the person not seem like they've done everything that they did. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but it, it, it just didn't sound all that good. Um, the way that he sort of, he, he started well, but in the end, uh, Ernest didn't, he didn't, I don't feel like he did him any favors in other words. So let's, uh, let's hop in here and just listen to a little bit of this first for some context of, uh, so this hearing, uh, let's see this website, uh, biodiversity adventure. So shout out to them biodiversity adventure, because we're going to play a little clip from their, uh, files, their archives over here. And, um, they said that this hearing, this bond hearing was held on June 26, 2023. So by June 26, 2023, uh, let's see, Nesto probably had been in jail, what, almost a year at this point. But, you know, they've had the benefit of hearing him talk and reading his messages and whatever else they looked into for all this time. So ever since he's been in there, they've been listening and looking into what he's been talking about. So by June 26, 2023, because, you know, we know we picked up on his conversations pretty much in 
in what was it September of 2022. So they've had the benefit of listening to a lot. And this is where Kevin Majeski um, picks up and he starts to tell the judge, uh, well, this is how we see the defendant. So here we go. Uh, I believe that's the, the sum total of it. I'm sorry. Of course, there this is Crail Lewis. That my client has an, Nesto's an attorney. That I've been told of, but I haven't been provided with anything on. I understand that he has a warrant uh, for a misdemeanor uh, case out of Henry County that's still awaiting. Um, and I've been told that there's a matter in California that the California doesn't want to extradite. I can't provide you. I wish I could give you more on that, but I, but I can't. I don't have it. All right. So that's my request. Um, and I thank you for uh, hearing me. All right. Ms. Patton? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Hold on. Oh, oh, hold on. This will be Kevin Majeski for the state judge. And this okay, will also quick. be... ADA Lisa Taylor. I wish I could be quick on this one, Judge. This is an extremely dangerous person we're dealing with here, and there's going to be numerous upcoming warrants coming in this case. I believe uh, Roswell told us today when we checked for an update. Uh, before the 13th, there's going to be about 15 plus more warrants coming his direction, serious felonies in there, uh, for sure. Um, the reason it was the 13th was so uh, particular is because the last time that these uh, particular cases were heard was in the month of January by Judge Belinda Edwards. She actually heard all of the CP cases and she also heard all the SC cases. Um, then she entered a ruling on one of the SC cases on the record and for whatever reason, didn't put anything else on the record for the other ones. But uh, Mr. Lewis and I had about- Yeah, why does Nesto look like he has his mask on all the way up to his eyebrows? <laughs> does he why does he right here right why does he look like he has this i mean i see the bridge of his nose a little bit but this, this is so ridiculous and look at everybody not her but these two that are in jail these okay he has a mask on uh these three, no mask. These three, no mask. These two, no mask. And these down at the bottom, no mask. But he's he's wearing this mask. He's wearing that mask all over, all over his entire face. But okay, that's all I had to say real quick. But I think it was a two, two and a half hour bond motion on that particular one that day. This will be considerably shorter. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, but the judge had first heard them back then. And if you note the uh, bond order that she did file in, I believe it was on 22 SC 184403. Uh, she denied bond in that case and left the no bond in 22 SC 184402, uh, noting that he was an extreme likelihood to uh, commit additional felonies. Going back to his history, Judge, um, of course, as Mr. Lewis correctly stated, starts in the 80s. He has a laundry list of crimes of moral turpitude that he's committed, uh, multiple armed robberies. There was the one in Cobb, but he also committed another one in uh, Douglas County as well. Got 10 years of custody for that, a short custody time in the first one, 10 years in the next one. Then, of course, false statements, multiple FTAs, probation violations, and the bank fraud, which he actually did get federal time for as well. So it, it was a little bit more complicated uh, than it was held out to be today. Uh, he's an ANC recidivist. Uh, to address uh, Mr. Lewis's um, statements that he made about the California cases. It's true, he does actually have two warrants for his arrest out of California. Uh, those are, as Mr. Lewis said, non-extradition warrants that he has present in both those cases. And we have the reports and the warrants in those cases in our file. They have to deal, both of those cases have to do with transporting stolen uh, cars back here to Atlanta, actually, is what it says in both of those reports. One of them was out of L.A. County and one of them was out of Orange County, I believe. And then, of course, there is uh, the case that you know, the other county in Georgia has to hold on him for as well, Judge. Um, when it comes down to these particular cases, I will note for the court that he does, I believe it's on case number 
22 CP 212559. There, that case became kind of like an amalgamation of a few cases when it got entered in the clerk's office. I believe there's three charges on there that have no bond currently. Uh, we did address that in front of Judge Edwards, uh, as Mr. Lewis could tell you as well, last time we were there, and I agreed with him. He was entitled to a bond then, still is now. And I had proposed, uh, when Mr. Lewis and I had talked, a bond of $25,000 per on um, those particular charges. Um, I, the reason I proposed those particular that particular bond is because that particular bond mirrored what he had in the other case, which was $25,000 good as well. Judge, we consider this person to be a flight risk. We have jail calls where he's talking about going to see his girlfriend in Florida um, multiple times, actually. We have a call where he was talking with his wife about going to stay in her boss's house. I'm going to leave out all the names here as Mr. Okay, so he says we have i'm gonna let him say it again and then i want to read y'all something real quick okay let's let him say it a bond then still is now and i had proposed uh when mr lewis and i had talked a bond of twenty five thousand dollars per on um, those particular charges um, I, the reason I proposed those particular, that particular bond is because that particular bond mirrored what he had in the other case, which was $25,000 good as well. Judge, we consider this person to be a flight risk. We have jail calls where he's talking about going to see his girlfriend in Florida. We have jail calls where we, uh, he is talking, <laughs> I, I don't know why I can't say it just like he said it, but basically they have jail calls where he's talking about going to see his girlfriend in Florida. Why do they think it's his girlfriend? Well, now, as much as, and I've said this over and over, so, but, you know, I'm going to say it again. As much as Sonia wants people to do away with the whole mistress and girlfriend and side chick and all of that, all those things, when you are talking to a man, um, you are telling the man that you love him. He has a wife. You're not the friend of the wife. You're not a relative. You're talking to this man. You've talked to him about what you all do in the bed, what you want to do in the bed, uh, what you can't wait to do whenever you get the opportunity to. Um, he's talked about your body parts. He's talked about how much he loves and enjoys um, your body and your body parts and all these type of things. Like what else is there for you to be called? There's nothing else for you to be called unless you want to be called a bad name. What else is there? You want to be called a boyfriend? I mean, what do you want to be called? Because that, it just, that just is what it is. That's the only, uh, that's the only acceptable thing to say about a person such as you, where they have heard you all talking, they have read the conversations. Let me skip over here. And uh, so, like I said, this is in June of 2023. So what if they read this email right here? That's in Uh, hold on, hold, hold what you got. What if they read this email that is in November, on November 20, 25th of 2022? Um, Sonia says, oh my gosh, did thing, did, I guess she meant to say things, did things just get complicated? I appreciate you telling me how you really feel. I feel you're not that big on expressing yourself better late than never. Excuse me, you know, 99% of my current life, more than most. And I think 
by you always calling, asking me what's going on in my life. I just automatically spill it all. And the fact that we did not go into this thinking we'd be more than friends as your friend. Now, the fact that we did not go into this thinking we'd be more than friends as your friend, I have your back a thousand percent. And I know it's important to have someone out here fighting for your freedom and justice. And I will be whatever you need. I know when I was young, it was, I was into everything, no guidance. And I stayed in somebody's jail and I grew out of those ways and changed to hold something against somebody based on their past as a young adult is foul. <laughs> Girl, this man just said your boyfriend, uh, it, it has, um, moral turpitude and we're going to go into that too. And you talking about, they shouldn't be holding it against him anyway. So for the DA to base this on your past as a young adult is crazy and shows how weak is his case is. Okay. People change. Now, speaking of your marriage, I feel if you two are still in love and seriously meant the vowels, I guess she meant to say vows. This situation, jail should not hurt it. If you two had issues prior, maybe not. Her daughter not liking you is an issue if she's the same, if she's in the same house and should have been addressed, should have kept you and her separate. You two have been together 10 years and I, I, I get it. Some things just run its course and end. I don't know. Your IG page makes it look like you two are so good. I have no opinion on the matter. It's your life. I support your decision on it, whatever it is. And they're not supposed to think you're a girlfriend? I mean, what What else? Who else? What else is there? What other kind of definition would there be? Um, and then to that, Nesto answers Sonia and says, I'm in love with you, Sonia. I'm in love with you, Sonia. And to that, Sonia answers and says, I love you more every day. Wait a minute. Yeah. This is her answer. I love you more every day. And I want you to be happy always ever since I found you in there. It's like a dark cloud over my head. I need you to be healthy. And I worry about you. And I worry a lot about you. If I don't hear from you, it's a problem in my head. <laughs> Phone calls from prison read this, I believe. It's a problem in my head. You have to call. Even if it's only for two minutes, I seriously worry about you there. I feel like I have to take care of you while you're down and I wish your family supported you during this time. Even if the relationship is not every day, the bond should be there. I'm not going to harp on it. I got you. I don't care about the details of those situations. I only worry about the you and I relationship. I feel like in my head, you are mine. What if they read this? Matter of fact, why wouldn't they read this? They didn't mention the text messages potentially because they like to keep some things, you know, close to the chest or whatever. But what if they read this? Why wouldn't they call you a girlfriend? <laughs> I, who else are you? A boyfriend? Um, she says, I only worry about the you and I relationship. I feel like in my head, you are mine and I have to fix this. I have to fight for you to be free. I sometimes wonder if we would move out of the friend place. Then I push the thoughts out of my head. We never agreed to be more than friends and I'm trying to honor that. It gets hard, really hard, but I try not to say anything to you 1%. It's added pressure and it would not be fair to you. I think I purposely don't try to date thinking something will come 
out of this situation. Being in love with you doesn't help dating. I feel like no one could compare. We vibe so well. We hang out and we do simple things and it would just be the best time ever. It's just always been conversation and great sex on borrowed time. I've never been in this space to want what you can't have. Love you. I mean, what if they read that? <laughs> Why wouldn't they have read that? Okay. So, you know, all of this, like they, they lied, they lied, they lied, they lied. They put this out there. They put that out there. I mean, you know, I mean, I guess that's what you expect from two liars, you know, talking to each other, just bouncing off of each other. Um, but yeah, to, um, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's crazy. It's real, real crazy. Um, and to all of that, just to be real quick, Nesto reiterates, I love you. You too, my love. Yes, I got your message. Uh, send pictures. I will get them in one day. So he, he reiterates, he gives her some reassurance and, um, you know, they rock on like that. I'm not going to keep going with those, but I just kind of wanted to piggyback on him saying the phone calls are there. Now we see the phone calls. We're about to listen to one and we see the messages and, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you know. It is what it is. Uh, let's go over here and let me show y'all this real quick or let you just hear it. I'm not going to go into it. So um, Kevin Majeski um, said that Nesto, um, he used the term moral turpitude. And I think he said it just like this. He has many crimes or whatnot in his past involving moral turpitude. So the term crimes involve, involving moral turpitude or CIMTs refers generally to a range of crimes that are considered to be base, vile, or depraved. The characterization is based on the evil intent or corrupt mind of the perpetrator of the crime. While there is no clearly defined list of crimes considered to be CIMTs, they are usually those crimes that involve fraud or dishonesty. Sex crimes are those crimes involving serious harm or injury to another. Okay, so just so they don't say all these things and it blow over some of our heads. I know some of us are very well versed in legal matters, but to the lay person, um, some of the lingo might just, you know, kind of go over the top. So here we go. Let's um, let's let him finish with this. Um, multiple times, actually, we have a call where he was talking with his wife about going to stay in her boss's house. I'm going to leave out all the names here, as Mr. Lewis did as well, uh, about her boss's house in Abu Dhabi, which is, of course, you know, quite far away from here, quite far removed from any court's jurisdiction here. And just the general scheme that's been going on here. Judge, when we were last in front of Judge Edwards, uh, she put us on the clock, said, you, you guys got to get this done. You guys got to get this investigation done. We've been working with Roswell off and on, talking to them to see where their investigation is. It's on schedule. It will be done by the 13th. You'll be served with, like I said, 15 plus new warrants, some of which are very serious that this court, just to put it out there, that this court uh, may not even be able to consider, unfortunately, it would have to be uh, considered by a sitting elected Superior Court judge. And for that reason, I, I would have to recommend the $25,000 per on the 22 CP 212559. I believe that uh, 
the other ADA, ADA Taylor has something to say about 23 CP 215407 and the state's recommendation for bond in that particular matter, Judge. All right, go ahead, Ms. Taylor. Well, good evening, Your Honor. Uh, yes, as Mr. Majeski has stated, he's considered dangerous. Um, there are several pending warrants that will be coming out that based on their content alone, um, there's a great likelihood that he's, you know, he's someone who commit further felonies. Furthermore, without mentioning the facts of the case in front of us, um, children were involved. The state is requesting a bond, knowing that he has to have a bond because it's been a well over 200 days, a bond of 200,000 per count, giving us a grand total of $800,000 bond for the case involving the uh, exploitation. There are four separate counts there. Mm -hmm. um, as standard, I would also request that there be an ankle monitor placed on Mr. Williams, as well as that he surrender his passport, not leave Fulton County, have no internet access at all and no contact with any minors or animals. But again, he's met all the Ayala factors. He's a flight risk as evidenced by evident, um, phone calls that we've heard. Okay. All right. oh, just one more thing. Um, if the court is inclined to uh, grant a bond on this, which would seem released, the state does have a number of people we would be requesting no contact with as well. All right. Um, Melody, you go, I'm sorry, Mr. Majeski, finish up. Oh, no problem. Melody Scretchen. Okay. Gail Bickham. Alasia Alexander. Leilani Thwaites. That's THW. Sorry about that. Now, in light of the information that we have, and it is somewhat not reliable information because it came from Nesto's mouth. So sometimes you would say, oh, yeah, that, that came from the horse's mouth, but... And like, it's true. But um, in this case, we're going to say that the information coming directly from Nesto is definitely not necessarily um, telling the full story. But Nesto, um, in a text that was read by phone calls from prison, Nesto told Sonia that Alasia Alexander was Dominique and that Dominique had been like a um, goddaughter or excuse me a goddaughter or a play daughter to to he and Shirley she had lived with them for three years um you know whatever she didn't need money she was a great girl uh, it actually kind of something about her father and those all that whole father talk again. It actually kind of sounded like that she was the maybe the sister of the the victim with the SA charges against him, uh, the alleged SA charges against him because of the whole father, you know, she didn't need the money, her father such and such. She lived with us for three years. She was our play daughter. She was so great. You know, all of that talk. And then we've, and then also we've lately heard Shirley uh, say that Dominique was still on the car insurance. However, we know that that doesn't necessarily make her who Nesto says that she was to them. It could, you know, that could very well be. However, it could just be that she was on the car insurance because she was a driver with his security company or something of that nature. Um, it, it could have had something to do with the security company or another one of those businesses as to why he had her on the car insurance. 
But nevertheless, Alasia Alexander, aka Dominique, is on the no contact list, which typically means that these are people that are either witnesses or have given outcry statements or both. These could be people that they are relying on to testify against Nesto. Um, any any number of things. She could be she could be the direct the di direct um, essay victim, but I don't think so because I think it the direct essay victim is another person on this list. But I digress so we can hear the rest of Mr. Majeski speak. Okay, and uh, he's going to call off other names. Uh, two of which seem to me like two of Nesto's daughters, um, two of the financial crimes, at least two financial crimes victims, and, you know, the list goes on. Okay, here we go. Miles Williams. I think that should be Miles Williams. Lakeisha Williams. Brianna Jordan. Deborah Johnson, Sheridan Strawberry, and her kids, Olivia Washington, and Erica King, or Erica Hughley. That was the person Mr. Lewis was referring to earlier, who is her co-defendant. Okay. in this particular matter judge and yes the ju the court did uh as he noted we did enter into a consent bond with her that was for reasons of course that we're not discussing here in court today okay anything else mr lewis yes judge one other thing uh and and i would so the other thing that i've got joe uh judge is although mr majeski speaks of these things and so does um uh Ms. Taylor, um, there, there was no evidence offered to any of these things that is that are now being alluded to during that hearing that lasted for two and a half hours. None of it. There was, and, and I permitted it, Judge, during the closing argument of the state, I permitted them to talk. I didn't object to any of it where promises were made about upcoming charges, charges upcoming uh, to, to Judge Edwards. And we have made it from January 31st all the way now to June the 26th. And we're told that in the future, something will be coming. Um, I'm asking this court to give the future no credit whatsoever because we had a whole bunch of future between January 31st and June the 30th. And if we keep on giving the future credit where things don't show up, we'll have a person sitting in jail who hasn't, not the issue of not being a convicted, but not even accused and being held. And so I'm gonna ask the court, reiterate my request to you before, UJR, uh, five, no more than 5,000 counting everything, and I did not hear Ms. Taylor tell us whether that was more than one picture in those five counts or not, but I thought it was one picture, or at least I believe that's what Mr. Majeski told me, but it's been so long ago since he talked about that. Um, I can't uh, rightfully remember right now. Thank you. It's, it's four. I can right now. It's four. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Court. Ms. Yeah, Taylor, Mr. Mr. Majeski addressed it. There were numerous images, actually. And as a matter of fact, um, the, the reason the case is still ongoing, the, the investigation is ongoing. Several more witnesses have come forward between January and now. They're still coming forward. We're trying to have a thorough investigation before. And do y'all remember how many times Nesto got on the phone with various people that he, you know, in his camp, as they would say, and said, and yeah, they got piece of an image, a half of an image, a piece of a picture, and <laughs> all that, right? And these people are sitting here clearly stating that 
there are numerous images, numerous images. And he, you know, not, not to mention, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they might not have seen the images on his, his legal side, but they had the information. So these things he's been privy to the whole time. He's just, uh, when we've heard him, he's, you know, just spinning the narrative in his favor. That's what he's been doing all along. Just uh, saying whatever he needed to say in order so that people would not unhook from him. But uh, let me let me let them carry on. We just indict. We can't just. I guess. All right. Bob South, booth one. Head up, everybody. Sit up straight. Sit up straight. Trust me, I'm tired too, but I've been working all day. Sit up straight. There you go. All right. Position two, ending in zero five. Okay, so we know how this ends. He's going to get the bonds that he's going to get. And that's going to be that on that. Um, let's see, in June, he still had at least, he still had something that didn't have bonds. I think it was the essay. And or he didn't have the essay yet in June and it came up and then he didn't have bond on that for a while. So anyway, something was something has always been holding up his bond. Right now is the first time he's had bond on everything. I guess he he technically has a bond on everything. And if he could make bond, he could get out. However, the. Bonds are just so expensive at this point. And don't forget, they have those guidelines and procedures that have to be followed. They got guidelines, procedures. You can't do it the nest away. They got guidelines, procedures. You've got to do what the company says. They got guidelines, procedures. They want that real, real no flim flam. They got guidelines, procedures. Bonding company cannot be scammed. Oh, oh, they got guidelines. Love Mont said they got guidelines. In order for anybody to come down there and and make the bond happen. So, so yeah. All right. So I just kind of wanted us to dip in a little pinky toe into all of those pools before we got into the meat and potatoes of what we're going to look at it. Well, that was kind of like the potatoes, actually. So let's go over here and get on over here to the meat. Uh, let's get rid of this one. And then we'll pick up this one and go ahead and play. Now I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I may I may work backwards, but I'm gonna pick up and play the latest, not the latest one with them in the jail visit, the video visit from recently. We're gonna get over into this Fulton County jail call. And I do apologize. The last jail call that I was going to listen to that went with the little song, um, I didn't get to circle back to it. <laughs> it's like as soon as I mean to get right back into a video, some other ones will, will some other calls will drop. And then I'm like, oh, I got to get over here and, and get into the, the newer ones. So anyway, just know I'm always keeping up just as I'm sure we all are. Um, but I'm going to get, probably I'm going to get into the latest one because it's, it's just the most intriguing at the moment. And then if time permits at some point, I may, um, I may circle back and do a video on the one that went with the little, something I did and I said I was gonna have, probably have to go back and look but okay let's get into this one okay here we go 
In these two calls made from Fulton County Jail, you will hear Nesto and Sonia talk about Shirley Strawberry. They also talk about their own relationship and their anniversary. Nesto goes on to say that he's a very strange individual. Take a listen. When have y'all ever known anybody to call themselves a strange individual? I just, I don't know that I've ever heard anybody say that. <laughs> I've heard people say that they are uh, maybe eclectic. I've heard people say that their taste is different and lots of things. But to say I'm a very strange individual, like, dude, that was, that was creepy. But um, as always, I'm going to let him tell you. Here, here he go. Me and my two sisters and my son and my niece came to the Hard Rock, and we went to this steak and seafood place. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, enjoying it. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, we were, we were done. We we're about to uh, head home shortly. But, yeah, we had a nice little time. That's good, that's yeah. good, that's good. That's we good. had a nice little family. Because, you know, she shares my birthday, so her birthday is today, too, so... Oh, oh y'all birthday at the same time? Mm hmm Yeah, same day. Just three years apart. Yeah. You know, Trisha, you. just I sent you a picture of us. Um, you should get it, I guess, tomorrow. I got I'll send it today. today. I, I, I got some today. Uh, you ain't got no you got pictures today? Yeah, you sent one uh 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 other wife. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, I got that yesterday. You got that today? Yeah, I got that today. I had, I had to send you. Uh, yeah. What does reprehensible mean? Hold on. Rep. <laughs> Rehensible. Let's see what does reprehensible mean. Because to that to her point, to Nesto, but what he said, you sent me pictures of the wife. I feel that I want to say that is reprehensible, but I don't, I want to make sure I'm using the right word. Deserving of blame or strong, let's see, or strong criticism. Where's the dictionary? It's giving me, um, it's giving me like synonyms. I want the real, yeah, of or deserving blame or condemnation. Y'all, that is reprehensible. <laughs> I'm glad. I looked it up. It fits worthy of, I, I missed worthy, worthy of or deserving blame or condemnation. Y'all, that's truly reprehensible. What are you doing on this, on this woman? This is his wife. They have a commitment to each other. Yes, he has broken the commitment. This is one of the reasons why breaking your commitment, letting somebody else into your marriage. It's just so ugly. That other person, if they didn't sign up for some open marriage mess, some uh, different agreement from what marriage truly is, but if they didn't sign up for that, I mean, there are people that write their own ticket, right? And they just do whatever they want to do. But for the marriage that it, it seems to me like Shirley signed up for, um, this is reprehensible. She didn't sign up to let Sonia inside of the marriage. She don't know who Sonia is. Obviously, she was hurt and disgusted and done when she found out about Sonia because she rocked along all that time. And seemingly when the Sonia news came out, 
or a little bit before it came out, she was out of there. She, you know, I, I feel like that, you know, yeah, she don't want to be a part of this jail stuff. And yeah, this is not her life and all of that. But at the end of the day, more than likely when Crail, because it's my theory, this is, it's just my theory. I don't know. I don't know these people. I don't know who, who talked to who and said what. I don't know. But my theory is that Crail gave her the information, gave her the, the real lowdown on how low down this man was being with this woman. And, you know, I don't know how, how much information he gave, but I would imagine he at least gave her as much information as he knows the, the DA in them have. And that is probably when she made her full decision. You know what? I'm good. I'm done and I'm good. And yeah, I still want to hear all of the explanation and I still want to hear everything that really happened and I still want to see how this plays out. But as for me, like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of finished, you know, and yeah, I, that's where I feel like she was like, yeah, I still, I still want to hear you out and everything, but not on my dime, not on my time, not in my house. Like I, I'm, I'm super good. I, I finally, heard from somebody that I believe and I, I'm going, I'm just going to run with that. So for this lady to be over there on Shirley's page and then the un, unmitigated gall of her to then send the photos to, to Ernest. And then y'all, I could start speaking in tongues. <laughs> I can start speaking in tongues on this part right here. Cause y'all do know that Ernest on, on a, on a earlier, one of these Fulton County calls, Ernest turned around and had the, had the next amount of unmitigated gall to tell Shirley that he saw her with this and that, and with the grandkids, whatever he, he said he saw her. And she said, how did you see that? And he was like, oh, yeah, no, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I saw it. I saw it. And so I'm sure she probably thought, you know, Dion, Lamont, you know, one of these people kind of, you know, maybe shared with him what they saw. But she probably didn't even think he really truly saw the photo because how how would he have seen it like would Dion have actually taken out the time to print off a photo and send it to him I don't think she thinks Lamont or Dion would be that tedious and I don't know conscientious to do all of that she probably thinks that they maybe just told him about the photo and he's saying I saw it or I, I saw y'all you know when really it was actually maybe somebody that told told him what they saw. But probably when she heard that, not in a million years, would she have thought he has some, some side winch that is literally stalking her page, printing photos off and sending them to him. Reprehensible. All right. Here we go. If I gotta look at her, you gonna look at her too. Shit. But I ain't know. Yeah, but I, I will say you're, you're right now. You know. Uh... How is it that you gotta look at Shirley? Like I haven't before. <laughs> before this situation came about, you know what? There was a time when I didn't even know what Shirley Strawberry looked like. I would listen to them on the radio between like a couple of radio stations when I would drive to work early in the mornings, you know, getting to work at like eight o'clock in the morning, eight 30, I would listen to them on the way to work. But there was years that went by that. I didn't even know what Shirley Strawberry looked like. I know she sounded gorgeous and eloquent and classy and all of that. I know what her sound was, but I didn't even know what she looked like. 
What are you talking about? If I got to look at her, you got to look at her. Maybe this has something to do with Nesto asking for um, Sonia to go on and retrieve him certain pictures from his social media. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, you might have to pass by her picture or you could tell him no. How about that? How about that, <laughs> side woman? Why not just say, you know what? Now, I'm I'm talking to you. I'm dealing with you. I'm not necessarily crazy about you being in the situation that you're in. And I am not going to be over on your social media page looking at you and your wife. I'm, I'm, I'm not here for that. So she didn't have to do anything. She, she, she did that because she wanted to. So, you know, full of it as usual, as usual, these people are both extremely full of it. And Sonia ought to not be so full of it since she, in her own admission, has to go to the bathroom all the time. <laughs> you would think, you would think she would not be so freaking full of it, but she is. She is. What? Say all that again. You, you're right. They ain't making no motion without me. Uh huh. You said that. The 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 you could just see in her face. I, well, one of the pictures I sent you, she was a little too happy. That was like a night. You went to you went to jail in the cellar, and she was dancing. And just, that was a night. The one where she was dancing, standing up with the granddaughter. Oh, oh, I didn't get, I didn't look at. Yeah, it. that was on the night, and I was like, oh, she's a little too happy. He ain't sick. <laughs> oh. And I was like, mm, I'm trying to figure out, mm, okay, he ain't sick because, you know, she too, she's too happy. Maybe they just, maybe, I don't know, maybe he lost his phone. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what happened to you that week still because I didn't know. And that was two days after I stopped talking to you. So I had to, like, look on your face, look on her face, see if she say, you know, he in a hospital or whatever, you know, but she wasn't saying nothing. So I'm like, uh, he in jail. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I think he in jail. Okay. Yeah, he and I figured it. Him in jail. Tanya too. Oh, he got locked okay. up. He got locked up about a. Uh, That's interesting. That's very interesting because <sighs> let me just think this through. I mean, I don't know. It it just my thought. And this is something else I, I think I've expressed before. But if he wasn't answering me, and I know this man is married, and he wasn't answering, I think that I would just stop calling. Because maybe um, he's gotten himself into a bind in his relationship, and he's gotten some sort of ultimatum, and he cannot talk to me anymore. Uh, maybe he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Maybe he has had to make a decision and he chose his spouse. So for you to get on this woman's social media and look and keep checking back and forth and back and forth and trying to figure out what happened, like this is just a whole nother level of, um, reprehension is that a word too <laughs> can we say reprehension i mean really like you couldn't just leave the man leave the the to me the obvious thing that happened i, I don't know maybe she maybe she knew he was doing crimes and things that were unsavory because to think that this quote unquote businessman is either in jail or a hospital. Mm, no, I mean, you're the side woman. He chose up. He chose, he, he, that's what I, I mean, that's what I think I would think. I think I would think that he had to make a decision and he done blocked me or he got another phone or he just, you know, he had to 
cut ties and why not let that be that but instead of letting that be that she she knew she either knew or she couldn't take no for an answer so i don't i don't know which one it was i think both of them are are horrible uh, but i don't know it I'm kind of 50 50 on it. Like you knew he was dibbling and dabbling in some stuff that was not cool. And, or you couldn't, you just simply could not take no for an answer. You could not conceive of the possibility that he did not want to talk to you no more. How about that? But you know, she was right, I guess. So <sighs> Whatever it, it it is, what it is. No, about a week after you, I think he went away. They got get him on. They got him on thirty year probation. Fuck that. Ooh. Kim from Silk. Tanya Ooh. Stoop. They got what? The guy in Silk. Kim. You got thirty years. You probation. know my sister. He got thirty year. He been on probation. He got a thirty year probation since I think the nineties. He been on probation. Oh, and they keep fucking violating him. Fuck that. I told him, I was like, why would you do that? I would have just took the time. I'm, what you going to give me, two, three years? I'll take it. I'm not doing 30 years probation. Because anything, can, drinking drinking beer can violate him. Getting a, a ticket can violate him. You know, that's bullshit. Damn. He locked up now? That's, yeah, he locked up now. Well, yeah. Riding, look, riding a motorcycle, riding a motorcycle without a helmet. This is a rough and tumble lady. I mean, how much time is it? Two, three years? I take it. I mean, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of lady are you, ma'am? How much time are you going to give me? Two, three years? I take that. Yeah, I can't do no probation. No, oh, that's too hard. I can't. I mean, because, you know, just living regular is just too difficult, huh? I mean, <laughs> okay. All right. I heard that. Violated health. He in, he in, in the state? He in uh, a county. He's in a, not, 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 not Fulton. He's in the one, I think he's in the Cab County. He's in one of them counties. For real? He in Georgia. Yeah. Waiting for a court date. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. About, about a month. Damn. But he, they just had him in a program for like a year last year. And then he did like a year two years ago, like, he'd been in and out for a minute because of this fucking probation. So he ain't making no money? Well, he's supposed to get it on the front end because he still was booking them. So he just, they having a problem right now because they don't want to pay him on the back end right now because they tour. They doing their dates, but they still supposed to pay him on the front end yeah, because he booked them. And I was quick. Wow. Yeah, but I miss you. I love you. How was your day? I'm glad I ain't got that shit going on. No. He should have got that money to pay. Got that shit off. Yeah, I would have just went on here for the time. Now, you're not going to give me 30 years on paper. I had like a year on paper. That shit kicked my ass. I'm like, no, I don't do paper. Yeah. How much time I got to do? Yeah, no, I'm not doing paper. Especially now, it's too strict. You say you send me what tomorrow? No, no, what, what? I ain't got nothing about tomorrow. Oh. You said you sent something just I like said that. I love you. Oh, okay. You've been drinking. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, you so silly. No, I don't drink. You so I just silly. I just, I just joke. I just joke. Golly, take a joke on me. <laughs> I got I to gotta get our video visit together. I know you can have them on Friday. Goodbye. Good morning. How are you doing? Okay. I see you. Hey, I'm fine. How are you? Well, I'm doing good. I've been looking at the pictures all night. You know, while everybody goes to sleep, I can look at everyone in the ER. You're a sexy no, mother. Yeah, you're a sexy mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, now. What you say? He hold no So what comes to mind at this juncture is listening to to his tone. So it seems like this is the morning. I think he just said, I've been looking at your pictures all night. Um, he's in, he sounds like he's in complete and total sexy mode. Uh, maybe he's still got a little time to himself at this point in the day. 
And uh, yeah, it seems like he's trying to take something somewhere. So, <laughs> so we're going to listen to this tone real quick because this completely jumped out at me now. Um, and probably to y'all too. Now, Sonia, if I'm not mistaken, she's going to mess it up. She is, uh, she's going to mess up what he's got going on in his mind, but here it is. Let's play it. You holding on? I'm holding on. Yeah, I like that. Hold on. Let's, uh, let's go back a little bit to where it starts to call to. Uh oh, did I miss it? No, there it is. Okay, here we go. How are you doing? I'm here. I'm here. Hey, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, well, I'm doing good. I've been looking at the pictures all night. And while everybody goes to sleep, I can look at them. Yeah. Yeah, you're a sexy no, mother. Yeah, you're a sexy mother. Mm -hmm. I've been looking at your pictures all night. When everybody goes to sleep, I can look at them. And you a sexy MF. <laughs> a couple of them. Okay, here we go. Oh, I... <laughs> yeah, I know. She holding on. What'd you say? She holding on. You holding on? I'm holding on. And her response to that is, she holding on. She holding on. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know, let me just... Sorry, something... <laughs> <laughs> something caught my attention um this is just it's not the the vibes don't match but you know a lot of times they don't um i think we've been listening to them talk and interact even writing like their vibe never matches the vibes don't go together at all um so he's on one wavelength and she's on a complete other plane she doesn't know how to just say, oh, really? You know, well, what did you what did you think? What did you like? What was your favorite part? Thank you. You know, she doesn't know how to just go along. Whatever the go along is supposed to be in that situation, like her, her thing is something totally different. Somebody's telling you, you a sexy MF, you know, a couple of them, a couple of times. And all you can think to say is, mm, <laughs> she holding on, she holding on. I mean, that just doesn't, doesn't go together. It's, it's a total buzz kill. But, um, okay, then here we go. Yeah, I like how you do your eyebrows. I like how you, uh, I like how you do your eyebrows. They be thick, pretty and shit. Yeah. Oh, okay, look at you. Oh, you can pay a compliment. She said, you're giving me a compliment, but she didn't say thank you. Who does this? I mean, really, literally, who says, oh, you're giving me a compliment? I mean, isn't doesn't everybody just know to say thank you? I thought that was like the English language, just part of it. I don't know what's going on there. I like what I like. Yeah, you know, it's all sitting in an email, but that, that I hear, I hear talking. <laughs> well, yeah, I hear you talking. Uh -huh. yeah. the, the, the pictures I got are you was on the eighth. They were sitting on the eighth, so I guess they were sitting on the eighth. Are you yeah. Oh, yeah, I sent pictures last night from last night. Oh, you did. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, don't hold it. Is that what you're saying, they old? Yeah, them old. I got I got pictures from last night. I sent you. Oh. Me and my son. We never seen my son. Um, uh, and then my sisters, and then me, myself. Oh yeah, I, and I ain't get the one with the, with the red bottom either. I ain't get none of them. No. Yeah, you you got some coming. All the, you you still got some pictures coming. Okay, okay. Didn't I send you some uh, pictures of uh, that bus, that white bus I had, the little tour bus I had. Uh, on my phone, yeah, I got pictures of, um, damn, it's hot outside. I got pictures of, uh, there should be a patrol car next to it. Oh, yeah. You're talking about, uh, 
the one I wrote over your your house that time, the white one. Did you? Mm, oh, the shadow. The shadow. Yeah. Uh mm-hmm. huh. You got that. You didn't send me. You didn't send me pictures of that. You sent me just pictures of of your of your other stuff. I didn't get a picture of the shadow. For real? I got a, mm-hmm, Nope, I didn't. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, I got. Um, you sure? It's I'm positive. No, you didn't send them to me. Look, you sent me the um the, the the RV. So he's been to her house in the shuttle. They've been together in the RV. She's been on road trips with him. They've slept all night together. This is all according to their own conversations. Um, yeah, sounds sounds like a lot of a lot of interaction to me, a whole lot. But they're they're going they're gonna really take us down through it in this uh in this video. So let's keep listening. You just always sent me the RV pictures. You never sent me. You sent me a picture of stuff that you wanted, but that, because you actually had that, you never gave me that. Man, I know I sent you a picture of that shit, of course. I know I did. That's on one of them phones. I will look. I will look on the phone because I've never deleted anything. Yeah, I will look on it. She said you sent me pictures of of things that you wanted. So could it be that... He thought <laughs> he he might have had like the the unction or the notion in his mind that she had the ability to um, to get him things like that or to figure out how to work together to to get him some of the vehicles that he wanted. It sounds like they're specifically talking about RVs that, that he may have wanted, you know, I don't know. uh, But it just doesn't seem like Nesto is ever just talking to a woman just to be talking to her um, from all of the encounters that we that have been alleged and that we've heard about. It just doesn't ever seem like he's just doing something just for the sake of just enjoyment. It seems like he's always going somewhere with it. Uh, That's probably not always the best place, but let's carry on. Yeah. So I will look on there and see if I put in the store. And see what it does. Pictures you send me, pictures in me, in front of Mr. in the mirror. My favorite picture is the one where you got them glasses on top of your head, sitting on your bed. Oh, yeah. That's my little house seat. Yeah, that one is two years old. I sent you some, um, mm mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when I lived on South Beach of my studio, right before COVID came. No, I, yeah, that's right when COVID hit. Because I met you, I actually met you six we months later. Yes, it's I met you October. The last Wednesday in October. Yeah. So when is our yeah. when is our when is our anniversary? So it's sounding like I I don't know. Y'all can put it in the comments what you think. It sounds like they're saying they met October 2020. Let's listen to that again just to see if we can get a little clarity. Um, because they said right before COVID hit something. So I guess it could have been October 2019, but let's hear how that was worded. Yeah, and see, so put it in the store and see what it does. You send me your pictures in me standing in front of Mr. in the mirror. My favorite picture is the one where you got the glass on top of your head, sitting on your bed. Oh, yeah, that's my little house seat. Yeah, that one is two years old. I sent you yeah. some, um, mm-hmm. yeah, that's when I lived on South Beach of my studio, right before COVID came. No, I, yeah, that's right when COVID Okay, so she said that was the picture of her in her studio right before COVID came. So COVID was the early part of 2020, the early part of 2020. Okay, so let's continue. Over here. Because I met you, I actually met you 
six months later. So she said, I actually met you six months later. So let's see. Let's see. So if COVID was, she said, I actually met you six months later. And then she said, right before COVID hit. So COVID hit, we all like got the shutdown news and everything in March of 2020. So let's just say February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So did they meet in August of 2020-ish? Okay, let's keep listening. Yes. I met you October, the last Wednesday in October. Yeah. So when is our, yeah. when is our, when is our. So the last Wednesday in October sounds like they're saying after COVID hit. So it sounds like they're saying. October 2020. It could be 2019, but it, you know, this is just what, what we're getting from the conversation they're kicking around. Okay, here we go. Anniversary. Let me hear you say that. <laughs> he said, when is our anniversary? I, 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 I wrote you what it was. Is October the No, it's 20... not. That's not true. Yeah, huh? It was the last Wednesday in October. I remember specifically because it was right. It was after my birthday. It was months after my birthday. I went to go get Katie's DJ stuff. That's why I was in Alpharetta. And then we had yeah, some right. gas. Okay. okay, you know what you're talking about. Okay, then. Yeah. I don't yeah. meet people like, I mean, often. Well, yeah, okay. I just want to make sure you, you know the date and time when I saw licking. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I had to just close my eyes. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to let him say it again. Brad, it was after my birthday. It was months after my birthday. I went to go get Katie's DJ stuff. That's why I was in Alpharetta. And then we had yeah, different right. gas. Okay. okay, you know what you're talking about. Okay, then. Yeah. I don't yeah. meet people like, I mean, often. Well, yeah, okay. I just want to make sure you, you know the date and time when I saw licking. Gotcha. It was, <laughs> and she said, "Gotcha." It was, and see, this further kind of underlines his mindset or the tone during the first part of the call. Like he's trying to get on some sexy time. That's where he's at, and she's, you know, all over the place. I don't know if she's not in a position right now and a place to entertain it. Maybe she's at work or whatever. Uh, but whatever, wherever he's trying to go, she seems like she's, I don't know, running from it. He's so silly. <laughs> he's like 430 in, in the evening. He's yeah, so okay. excited. You know that? Okay. Something is wrong with you. <laughs> he is a sick yeah. puppy. Okay, well, you have yourself a wonderful day today, then, darling. I will, because you called me. Yeah, I'm trying to keep going. I talk to you every damn day. It's a good thing. We used to. Y'all have no other room for no other uh, uh, people, like you say. I don't want to have that kind of time of room. I don't really have no room for no other people. And, and here she goes with her, with her whiny, <laughs> with her whiny talk. Oh my goodness! Okay, let's, let's start it back. Yeah. What'd you say? That's cool. Yeah, you no, know, I love you. Oh, I know that's the deal. Yeah, I wish I could picture uh -huh. uh, my last moment, but I'm trying to keep remembering going for myself the last uh, mm. special moment because. <laughs> You really never took pictures together because, you know, you need, you know. No, I don't care about none of that shit. Let's explain some shit. Yeah, that's what you say. That's what you say. I know. One thing about me, I'm, I know what satisfies me. I don't look for other people to make excuses, but I do me. And I'm going to let me because I have a great judge of character. So I'm good. So God has really been good to me. And he's really grown you in my life. is really, really. It's where he started running. Well, he been running off the rails, but I mean, it's just, 
it's just somewhere else when he starts talking this talk to me. So let's, let's roll it back a second, a couple seconds. I'm, I know what satisfies me. I don't look for other people. So she starts talking about some pictures and, and it's too bad. We never took any pictures together. And then he starts saying, look, that's not what I'm, I'm, I'm on. I'm not on that. I'm not about that. I don't care nothing about that. And I feel like if you do care about stuff like that, these are the things that should perk up your ears to where you should, you know, you should be like, you know what, do I really want a man where he doesn't care anything about memories or taking photos with me or you know he doesn't care anything about all that type of stuff like he's just you know on some dogmatic um just get you in the right position in the right place in the right time and that's all I'm thinking about you know because obviously she has a little bit of a sentimental bone in her body she's sitting there wishing that they would have ever taken pictures together so she could look at them now and she could maybe send them to him and he's like straight I don't care nothing about that I look I'm like this and I'm like that you know this this should be you know sirens red flags and stuff um the red flag of course the ultimate red flag is that he's married but she didn't care anything about that one. So I guess, you know, likewise. I'm going to make it useful, but I do me. And I'm going to let mm -hmm. me I have a great judge of character. So I'm good. So y'all have really been good to me. And he's really grown you in my life. is really, really keep me. <laughs> he said, I care about that I, he said, I'm a great judge of character. Okay, so. I got you. I judged the situation correctly. Uh, somehow God has brought an extra curricular woman into his life. Y'all. <laughs> Y'all. That's not God. That is not God. There is too much in the word about not being in adultery, okay? And not even being in fornication. So there's just word after word after word after word after word about being faithful and not being an adulterer, not being an adulteress, um, all the things that are wrong with it, everything that you do to yourself. And it's, um, it's grounds for divorce, even, even in God, you know, even, you know, God even says, I hate divorce, but if this happens, then I'll allow it, you know? So it's, it's, again, reprehensible to even say that God brought this adulterous relationship into your life. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You know, so I don't know, maybe his God is Satan, but um, that's a lie. You focus and balance, and I appreciate that. Do I have do I um, all the time she go on? I appreciate that part. And it's good to talk to grown folks. I miss, I miss that little piece, what he said. Okay. Yeah, I, know. Mean, I have a great judge of character, so I'm good. So God has really been good to me, and he's really grown you in my life. It's really, really keep me focused and balanced, and I appreciate that. Do I have do I all the other time she go on? I appreciate that part. And it's good to talk to grown folks. And it's good to talk to a woman your age still look young as they are. That's wonderful. You have no clue. I'm holding on still, right? Now, if I can hold on, still. Yeah. <laughs> I try. I try to say yeah, that. Yeah, my son be cracking on me. You like voice? I said my son be cracking on me. 
I got more energy than his ass. That's the thing. Oh. Well, he moved like an old person. For real? I'm kind of telling him. Yeah. He never was into sports and running around. He always just laid on the bed and played video games. So. Here she goes cracking on her kids again. So, you know, his body. His body is. Yeah, and I, I, that's what I tell him all the time. Like, boy, I can outrun you. I can out jump rope you. I can out physically. I could outdo him, and it's like I shouldn't be able to do that. And he, I got thirty years on him. It looked like your legs are. Uh, you got big legs at one point in time. No, my legs are back to normal. My sister was cracking on me yesterday. So I'm like, oh my god, you got all your weight back. I was like, I sure did. Now I got to get bigger. So I'm just where I used to be. Okay. Well, now I need to get bigger. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Everyone, all this is the sex and good. Stay motherfucking fly. I love it. I appreciate you doing every day. I got 14 days. I have 90 days to go let me go. So, so that's, that's what God telling me. Just chill. 90 days, they got to be enough on. So I'm good. You got it right. You got to do something. So they got to get me enough on. Got to do something. Yeah, something. So I'm good. The song is already up past the storm now. I got to get the clouds to come. And they're going to fly with another sunshine. So get ready for my first cup of coffee when they hit down there. Where you okay. Don't you worry, just chill. And if he only said it one time, <laughs> and we know it's more than one time, but if he only said it one time, here's one of the times when he said, I can't wait for my first cup of coffee when I touch down there. Where 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 is she right now? In September 2022, she's in Florida. So he's like, just get ready because I'm I'm coming. Yeah. And you're going to start on no. that, that. I'm happy for that. Everything works. Yeah. I was, the lady was trying to tell me to change the name. I'm like, I'm not changing the name because it's no. cocktails. And she's trying to say, well, since you're not serving hard liquor, I said, you need to look up what cocktail is. A cocktail is an appetizer and any drink with alcohol in it, beer, wine, all of that is considered a cocktail. No, no black people. You stay on what you want. That's, that's your vision. God gave you the vision. He's going to make it jump through like you need to. Just don't fucking give up on it. I don't give a damn if you sleep on the floor and that shit. Don't give up on it. No, he's going to give up. Yeah, just see the shit through. You know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm full, make it I'm, I'm full of focus. And thank you for, thank you for your, uh, how about I say, inspiring comment. You know, you keep it real. I you. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I ain't got to talk about that no more. And I'm good. I'm, one thing I mean, I'm a loyal motherfucking Capricorn. Real Capricorn. I don't know about them fake motherfuckers. Real Capricorn. Uh-huh. Like money and loyalty. And you, my daughter, and my granddaughter. Oh, y'all. Same. Capricorn. Capricorn. And she's doing, how's your daughter doing? Uh, she's doing good. Oh, okay, really good. good. And your granddaughter's mm-hmm. still getting full, ain't she? She's doing great. Okay, so is she taller than you yet? She can call it on me, you know. I ain't call. So. How are you gonna be loyal? How you <laughs> how are you gonna um talk about how loyal you are when you are in the midst of cheating? Um, isn't that like maybe the most disloyal thing that you can do? Um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, because you do stand there and you make vows wherever you make them, even if you make them in the courthouse, you make the vows in front of your your uh, judge, the official and a witness, at least one witness and the person that's marrying you. Uh, it's not many other situations where you actually make vows like you. Act, I don't know of any others, actually. I mean, maybe when you have to go to court and you put your hand on the Bible, you say you're going to tell the truth. But other than that, like there's hardly other any other situations, regular occurrences in life where you stand there and you say vows and you make these promises. And then he is really got the nerve to pat himself on the back about how loyal he is in the midst of doing one of the most disloyal things you can do. Um, if this is not just, you know, a liar and somebody that don't have the truth in them, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, he's lying to her. He's lying to himself. 
He's excited about this lie that he's that he's telling himself and everybody. So, okay. She about an inch, two inches. She about five feet, fat one. She's not tall, but she's taller than me. It's amazing how so a small person like you can have all that good love. It's amazing. Huh? See, he's still he's still on the same vibe. Not the smallest puppy you ever dealt with. He want to talk about the loving. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never thought you'd like something this little. No, I, I, I like I like. Uh, I'm gonna break it down. I'm a very strange individual, so mm-hmm. I have a different type of taste of things that I like. So there it is, y'all. Won't there it is? Won't there it is? Come on, come on. Won't there it is? <laughs> Nesto said himself you know what they should play this in court Nesto said himself I'm a very strange individual and how did he put it you know what I don't even like saying this out of my own mouth let me <laughs> I retract that from my mouth let, let me let him say it again <laughs> I take that out of the universe here we go. Have you ever dealt with? Absolutely. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never thought she liked something this little. And then she called herself something. What? Who? I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I just don't know. Cause I, I, I don't think I've ever called myself something. You never like. You never thought you liked something. No, you're someone. I'm. I'm someone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Carry on. No, I, I, I like. I like. Uh, I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna. I'm gonna break it down. Let him break it down, y'all. A very strange individual. So mm-hmm. I have a different type of taste of things that I like. So I have a different type of taste of things that I like. Yeah, so says your um charges as well. So people think they know you they don't know fucking know you just be talking. Ooh, and then he went on. People think they know you, they don't know you, they just be talking. I think he's I think they should play this in in the if he gets to court, if he goes to court, I think that these words of his own right here really bear witness to the things that they have found and the things that people have alleged. Um, Yeah, this this can be his own testimony against himself. So mm-hmm. I like what I like. You're know, like uh, they call that shit not unique. It's called uh, when you find them. If- and also, just her listening to this. This is not a compliment. Like he's asking her about, or she's asking him about her. Just a second. So she's in the middle of having a conversation about her. And then he starts going all off into this strange, uh, I, you know, I like strange things and I like what I like. And people think they know you. They don't know you. They just be taught. This that's just doesn't sound like a compliment to me. If somebody had to say all of that to me about me asking like about me, I, I would be like, Oh man. <laughs> like you're talking about me like I'm a I don't know. I don't even know. Like some sort of foreign object or something. And I'm so um I don't know, distasteful or something to everybody else. You have to be all this that and the other thing to like me. Like really is I mean, it just, it doesn't sound good. In other words, it, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound like a compliment. Um, I don't know. Um, Ernest is very calculative and he could be going into all of this because he doesn't like how he was on a, he was on a path. He was going somewhere with this conversation. 
and he hasn't really been able to get where he wanted to go. So this kind of might be uh, kind of like a slap around and a knock you upside your head. Like, you know, I'm annoyed and this is why it turned in this direction. Uh, because usually if something doesn't feel nice and complimentary, it's not. And uh, in other words, this could just be a very passive aggressive um, conversation that he's rolled into now that he's not really able to get the conversation going in the direction he wanted it to go in from the onset. But OK, here we go. What do you call that shit? That's what I want to say. Oh, exotic. exotic motherfucker. That's it. <laughs> this woman yeah, is not exotic. You got it. Yeah, she's like a mother. Yeah. Jaguar to me. Exotic. You're like a jaguar? Exotic. Yeah, she's different. Oh, uh, in other words, that, that's a good thing. Thank you. That's yeah. a nice compliment. It is. You ought to appreciate that shit because you're walking. I don't know. I ain't never seen a walk like that. I ain't in my whole time of life. I've never seen no type of walk like that. Okay. Yeah. And she's not taking it like it's a compliment either. She's like, oh. <laughs> okay. I guess it's a compliment. <laughs> and now she's trying to think, well, how do I walk? Like, what is, what's really going on? It's a nice walk, just like your walk. Is what? I said, just like your walk. Like my walk? Mm, your walk is nice, too. Oh, well, excuse me? Excuse yeah. Me. Okay. Oh, you know, I walk here. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I've been here, y'all. It's not going to be. Let me go to Walmart. Oh, the thing don't even work. Let me go to Walmart. Okay. Well, you have yourself a wonderful, lovely day today, love. I will, because you called me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be fine. Just, just keep right and rolling. You have a wonderful day. <laughs> you have a wonderful day. You have a fun Friday. All right. Love you, too. It's my birthday. I love you, babe. The caller has hung up. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss the next one. Where am I? Okay. I really like the new music that they put in their outro. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's in the intro. No, it's just in the outro. So I really like that. That sounds good. Y'all know I'm, I, I love me a good little beat. But anyway, it's been a good time. It's been a good time. Hey, well, thank you so much for stopping by. And of course, I will see you all on the next one. And if you have not liked the video, you weren't sure if you were going to like it or not, you're going to wait to see if you liked it before you liked it. Please go ahead and like the video since you've been here this long. Also, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And once again, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.